What is up, YouTube people and world? My name is Eric Stone. If you don't know that by now, uh, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to Expiring Music Writer, my YouTube channel. Uh, share, like, comment, dislike, suggest, argue with me, I don't care. Um, uh, check out my last couple videos. The last one I did was, uh, like, freedom of speech, and I was kind of got drunk on it, but oh well, it's my channel, what are you going to do? Anyways, but this one, I've been wanting to do it for a while, and I just finally started to think about doing it, and like, and I think every generation says this according to, you know, like, the previous generation, or the next generation, you know, they people from like, the 50s say, oh, the 30s were so much better, you know, and so on and so on, you know, because, you know, there are things that were better, you know, the next generation or when you were a kid, you know, and I was born in 86, and tonight I'm just drinking tea, so that part will get too out of control, uh, just tea, but, uh, sweet tea, anyways, um, but like I said, I've heard this many, many times. You know, the 70s were the best or the 80s were the best to live. Blah. You know, like I said, I think that just happens with every generation. Because there are things <clears throat> that the previous generation didn't have or things that are a little bit better for the next generation. And my deal is I've always said the 90s, which... I would have been for 1990. But to me, the 90s were the best. And that's just my opinion. Don't get mad. I'm wearing my Mickey Motor Cars hat. I know that's nothing to do with music, but uh, I just wanted to wear a hat. Um, but my deal with that is I think 90s kids, late 80s and 90s kids, you know, had the best of both worlds. And this is what I mean by that. We were the last generation to know what it's like to do research papers with no Google, no internet. You know, I remember doing research papers and essays and there you couldn't type in Google there to, you know, you had a get a damn book that was that big, you know, and flip through and find the information you needed. They called them encyclopedias. But I also was there when internet started coming. You know, and that's why I'm kind of say the best of both worlds. I got more points than that, but that's the main point. Like, you know, because I, uh, I've argued with people because Oh, some older people, are, oh, you don't remember what it's like. Yeah, I do, you know, because I can remember when I was a kid, you know, I looked this up earlier. Dial-up internet started <clears throat> in 1992. I think is the year that dial-up came out with the dial-up modem. Mm. Tastes good, but anyways... And it probably wasn't until, I, and I was probably six, seven at that dot time. It wasn't until I was about 10 or 11 when it really started to become popular where I live, which would be a rural area if y'all didn't know. Um, I mean, I didn't li I've didn't. i never lived in a big city. I've lived in a small town. I've lived pretty much in the same small town since I was a kid. Uh, except for the time I went to school, uh, college, and, and that's about it. I mean, I've never really lived anywhere but Magazine, Arkansas. But anyways, um, I hate to say numb. I'm trying not to do that, but, but my point is, or one of my points is, you know, you know, I was a kid when the first Nintendo came out, you know, which they had Atari's before that. 
and I can't remember when the Tories were invented. You know, the, I know there was Atari, Ataris, but when I was a kid, it was the the very first Nintendo, Mario Kart, and they've advanced a long ways from now. Um, but I can still remember going outside and actually doing stuff, you know, using our imaginations to play outside or whatever, you know. But like with the internet, you know, like I was saying before, you know, and what cracks me up, if you got a 13-year-old kid now, a teenager, and put them on the speed of what dial-up was, they would lose their fucking mind. I can on vividly remember when I was a teenager, well, preteen, it was before, because when I moved uh, to where I grew up, my teens, it was like night 2000. And, uh, but anyways, I could vividly remember going home I didn't have to go to my Mimi's, but because I lived, like, we lived down from where my mom and dad worked. But I could remember going home if I wasn't in trouble or for some reason wasn't up at the office. And honest to God, I could go in there, warm up two El Monte burritos, and they were the bigger ones at that time because uh, you got more for your money back then. And put two deals of cheese on them. Warm them up in the microwave for three, four minutes, whatever it took. I could flip on the TV, watch Aladdin, one episode, 15 minutes. Well, go home and fire up the dial-up. Then do all this stuff. Watch almost two episodes of Aladdin. And that thing would finally come up. You know, kids would lose their minds nowadays. You know, they just don't under er, these. And I don't have kids of my own, but I know, you know, like they just don't understand what it's like to not be without stuff. You know, I didn't get my first cell phone till I was 17. You know, and my mother gave me one. It was her old one. And I was like, why the hell would I need this? I don't need no damn cell phone. You know, um, but I understand it now. Now we can't get off our cell phones. I'm using one right now. But the funny thing is, and I wish, they, I don't th know if they make them anymore or not, but I wish, honest to God, I would love to find an old Nokia. That's what I had. It was a burnt orange Nokia. You... I think you could text on it. I'm not quite for sure. I think you could, but I hate texting. I'm not that big on texting. But, and it was, you didn't have all the keyboard, the whole keyboard. You had the but, or the, the digits, one through zero, or one through nine and zero. And go, you know, if you want to talk about cat, go do, do C, do A. And you had to go all the way down to the T, R, S, T, you know. It wasn't like it is nowadays. But not only even just not that far back ago, things were made a lot better, as in what I am mean by that is, I can remember, I still had that same phone after I got out of uh, high school. And I remember I was mowing my yard one day, and it fell off my hip or out of my pocket, whatever, you know. Didn't know it. Went in the house. I was like, oh, lost my cell phone. Didn't think nothing of it. Looked for it, couldn't find it. Next time I went out and mowed, and let me tell you, it rained in between the time that I lost it and found it again. Um, I go, thing had been muddy as hell. It rained on it. I ran over it with the lawnmower, you know, the whole works. I mean, it was dead. Granted, it had been like a week. Plugged it up. We're just fine. You couldn't do that nowadays. You look at a phone nowadays and it just screws up on you. But anyways, they were things were a lot more durable back then too. I remember when I was my nephew was one or two years old. He's about 10, 11 years old now. 
and I actually bought him for Christmas a Tonka trunk that was actually metal. It wasn't plastic. It was metal. And mainly because I hadn't seen one in a long time. You know, nowadays everything's plastic. You know, back when I was still a kid, it was a lot durable and a lot of it was metal. You know, um, but like back to my story with like the internet and stuff, like I said, these kids don't understand how great the, uh, they've got it, these young kids. You know, we didn't have cell phones to play games with or text with. If you wanted to talk to somebody, you had to go to an actual phone that was either hooked up to your wall on the phone or in your house, go to a pay phone and put coins in it, you know, and you know, if you, it was funny, I was telling someone one time, or a kid one time, I said, I can still remember vividly calling a certain number, nothing dirty, <laughs> that would just tell you the time and temperature. And they thought I was nuts. But where I lived, if you called, the bank had a number where it told you the time and temperature. You know, back in the day, you had to wait until the 6 o'clock news or whatever to find out how cold it was going to be or hot it was going to be, if it was going to rain or not, you know. Um, another thing with, like, technology, like, the because, like I said, the best of both worlds, because, like I said, I remember not having any of that, the Internet and stuff, and I remember having it. It's And the bad with me, with me, this is just my personal thing, there's good and bad in anything, whether it's religion, politics, whatever, technology, I think there's good and bad. Good, like, with social media, it's good to get, like, local businesses up and go in and easy way, a lot easier way to get people to know you're out there selling whatever it is you're selling. Or bands. You know, if you're a new, a local band that just started out, that's the best way to do it for me, or to get a name out there, I think, you know. Um, you know, back when I was a kid, talking about bands, you know, unless you seen them live or they weren't on the radio, you didn't know who the fuck they were. I mean, because I can remember, you know, when I, it was, I'm a big music guy, if you haven't noticed with my channel, I'm very into music. But anyways, and, um, but I remember the very, I don't remember the actual first CD I really got. Cause like tapes were going out of the way, we're going to the wayside, cassette tapes were. I remember getting them, but they were going more towards CDs. And mom, my mom and dad bought me, it was like the Dixie Chicks, uh, NSYNC, Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera, all that stuff from the late 90s. Country, a little bit of pop. Anyways, more country, and my uncle did a few rock albums, the greatest hits. Anyways, um, but like, if you didn't know a band or, you know, if a band that you loved was coming out with a new album, say in six months or whatever it was, the only way you could find out if what was new going to be on that album or CD, you know, don't get a mixed up. Album and CDs are different. But anyway, what was going to be on the, their next project, You, the only way to do it back then was the singles on the radio that they promoted for that new record. You know, nowadays, it's a good thing and it's a bad thing. Like, I like when new bands come out with uh, new music, but it kind of sucks because when the actual release date comes, it's like there's only two songs you didn't hear, everything else you've heard, so it's not really new that much, you know? And that's one thing I don't like. I liked opening the CD, physical CD or album. Well, I didn't get into albums so much later. Or cassette, you know, and you'd open up the booklet on the cassette tape or the CD, the leaflet in the CD. And, you know, you had your lyrics and all that stuff and pictures and stuff. And I love that, you know, liner notes. 
but nowadays with all this technology, Spotify, sorry, I got the hiccups. Spotify, Google Play, iTunes, Apple Music, all that stuff. Now it's just like you can pick and choose what you want. I just don't think it's that great anymore or as great as it used to be, you know, because like, like I've said before, and I might be like talking to the same subject, but in a different way that, you know, like I wanted to be surprised if say Mark Chesnut come out with a new album. You're like, oh, you know, you know, back in the early nineties, you know, cause like I said, it was a surprise. You may have gotten two singles, mainly just one, maybe two, but mainly just that one single they promoted for that for the new album. And then you had like in between 10 to 13 other songs that you were like so ready to dive into, you know. And like now it's like, okay, now, and I understand I'm both ways on this. Bisexual, no one is teasing, but like, because artists will nowadays artists, especially like the ones that are not like on uh, major labels, but like ones that are on independent labels, they don't even have a record deal or whatever. You know, they go like usually a lot of them go like every certain few days will come out the new if they got a full length album. Usually now it's just EPs or a single. And, you know, they do say they've got like, say, seven songs off an EP. You know, and they'll do five of them. And then the EP will come out. I'm like, it's just not as fun anymore. There's no surprise anymore. You know, and, you know, like I said, one thing though I do like about the Spotify and I listen to more uh, iTunes. Uh, just cause I hate commercials with like Spotify or Pandora, but anyways, is, uh, they suggest, well, if you like Miley Cyrus, you may also like Ashley Tisdale or whoever, or say you've never really, you're trying to get dive into like, say, um, punk rock. If you like the Misfits, you may like, you know, and you may not like it, and you may find some gems you love that you didn't even know existed out there, you know. That's what I like about it, you know, because there's so much. But what I don't like about it, it's not a surprise anymore. And I don't feel like getting the digital copy or listening to something digital, you know, granted it takes, or, there's less space. You don't have a hundred CDs lying around in your house, but it's just not the same to me, you know. And liner notes too, like, you know, you I you get a if you're in a music like I was or still am, you know, like well, what influence to have this song, and then they might tell you, oh, you know, this is why we come up with this song or this what song was influenced by so and so or whatever, you know. I'm like, oh, okay, I get it now, you know. Um, but like I said, you didn't have that back in the 90s, you know. And uh, But, you know, and word of mouth, too, that's what gets me. It's just amazing to me how, how wildfire word of mouth can spread, like, I've talked about this a little bit in my uh, last video, but there's a different point to this same story. When I was about the same time, no, maybe a couple years after that, I'd moved from, well, it was still a magazine, but moved from in town to where we, I grew up when I was a teenager and moved out the house. I'd, I had a buddy in sixth or seventh grade that we were really tight. And I was either at his house or the, he was at my house, vice versa, you know, didn't matter. We were always together. And um, like I've said in previous videos and or whatever, that the only thing that I grew up listening to was classic rock, what I call classic rock, 
late 60s, early 70s. And today's, what they call today's country, which would have been late 80s to 90s. And, uh, and I love all that stuff. But uh, this particular weekend, uh, my buddy and me, we're just sitting there, you know, jamming out, doing whatever teenagers do at that time. And he comes to me, he goes, um, have you heard of a band called NWA? And I'm not going to repeat what it means. Look it up. You'll know what it means. I'm like, no, I hadn't. He told me and, you know, I was like, oh, this is cool. Mainly because I had cuss words. It was black people with attitude. And I just don't never have said that word unless I'm referencing like that or something, but I don't like that word. But anyways, and, uh, but anyways, what the, I'm going to connect this together is, you know, when NWA, I did research years later, come out with Straight Out Compton, their very first album, there was no promotion to it. No radio station would touch it because it was so has so much adult language and explicit lyrics. And this was before the parental discretionary, whatever you call it, sticker. You know, you didn't, they didn't have that back then. And um, so, um, but it got through word of mouth about this band and they sold like a million records without a record deal, and it was all word of mouth. You know, and it just amazes me. And I remember then, Dr. Dre, I was watching something on Dr. Dre one time. He was talking about when he was still on tour with NWA. He was, you know, the funny thing is, he said it was surprised him because they were inner city black kids. You know, they grew up in Compton and Long Beach and all that, you know, the city. And he goes, when we were playing some place in Kentucky, I think, is what they said, you know, and he goes, we're, we're expecting a lot of black people. He goes, there might have been like two black people in the audience. He goes, the most, he goes, the majority of the people there were white suburban kids. And this was way before Eminem was even a rapper or, you know, even rapped, you know, and it, it just word of mouth, you know, and that's how things got done back then, you know, and so, but like I said, that's what my deal is with, like, you know, we had the, no internet, we did, and, you know, especially, and I might be going off a little bit track here, but, let me try and think of anything else I've got with, like, that actual thing, with, like, the best of both, I mean, like I said, we had, you know, you still had, I think uh, chat rooms were just starting out. Of course, it took you 30 minutes to say hello or hi or whatever with the internet, you know. And, and like I said, I just think that every generation says the same thing. When I was a kid, it was 10 times better, you know. And I think every, because like I've got uncles going, well, the 70s were the best generation ever. Or, you know, then you got, well, the 50s were the best generation ever, you know. But, you know, and I'd love to go back to the 90s. I love it. What I would like to do, I shit you not, is I'd like to take about 100 to 150 teenagers, you know, from, say, 13 to 17, that, that age range, and get rid of the Internet, get rid of the... Uh, Everything that technology is set for, you know, have a phone, either have it on the wall, and that's all, you know, no texting, you know, no nothing, you know, the old school stuff, you know, and or make them do reports for school with an encyclopedia, no Google, you know, just not to be harsh, just because I like for them to see what I'm talking about, you know, how much different it was. And it really wasn't that long ago. I mean, it was, but it wasn't. You know, I'm 36 years old. I hadn't been around that long, but a lot of things have changed since I was a kid. You know, uh, 
I know I'm getting off subject here, but like, even when I was a kid and I graduated high school, 2005, so I'm talking 2002, three years, 2000, excuse me, 2002, 2003. Um, you know, it was still legit for a kid. And I remember this, doing this all the time because I used to get my mom, or mad at mom, mom for whatever teenagers get mad at the parents for. But uh, if I didn't feel like going home to the office, because that's where, you know, um, uh, we stayed, my uh, fam, my grandma and grandpa, they owned a telephone company and we called it the office and we'd always go out there. But if, say I wouldn't, didn't feel like going home, well, it was mainly supposed to be if I missed the school bus, but a lot of times it was just because I didn't want to mess and go out there. I would walk from the school to my grandma's house in town. And it was probably a good two miles, maybe. Maybe not that long. I, or I'm, I'm horrible with math. I don't know. But, I mean, it was a pretty good distance. I mean, and, you know, but I wouldn't, I don't have kids, but I damn sure wouldn't let a kid do that now. Unless I had a cell phone and a buddy with them, I mean, you know, and I mean, you, you just can't trust people nowadays. And that's probably what I'll get into a, in another thing. I'd love to do a podcast with different people like Joe Rogan. Not the same stuff as Joe does, but like, you know, I'd love to get different opinions of different people and stuff. Like this is, I'll tell you this. On my Facebook page, like I said, I know I'm, we're going off. We went a whole different direction, but uh, I put I'd been researching for a while about hallucinogenic mushrooms, magic mushrooms, whatever you want to call it. And it's there's some place in Jamaica, I think, where they. There's a place you can go and it's a medical facility and they they grow their own mushrooms and it you go not uh everything people are watching you just in case you got a bad trip this and that whatever but I've heard I, I don't know what the drug is in the mushroom itself but it's legit as in it's not something made in a factory like coke or heroin or whatever um um, and it's supposed to help with depression, stress, anxiety, PTSD. And I said one time I'd like to try it just to see what would happen. And holy shit, did I get some backlash on that. Which I knew I would. Um, but, and then, but my deal is don't talk about something if you don't know what it is. And I don't know that much about mushrooms. Other than ones you can actually eat that are not dangerous for you. But, I mean, and where I live, they've been trying to pass, uh, I don't know, uh, marijuana, issue four. And I've done marijuana once. I'd like to do it again. Um, but in my, I don't know how this is with y'all, but with me, in the situations I've been in with, uh, a pot, <laughs> sorry, a pothead versus an alcohol, no, no, alcoholic, but a drinker versus a pothead, I would rather deal with a pothead than I would someone that drinks all the time. Uh, usually, I've had, you know, in my experience, they're, you don't know what they're going to do because one time they can be happy, drink another time, you know, you don't know. And like someone said on Facebook, said everything's too much of a good thing and it's a good thing. And I think that's right too. And I think too it becomes with your personality. If you got that addictive personality, nothing's really going to be good because you're going to overdo everything. That's just my, you know what I mean? And like in moderation, drinking's okay. But in the long run, it's not that good for you, you know. 
So I don't know. But anyways, with issue four in Arkansas, it did not pass. I just could not believe it. This is kind of what I found funny as, as hell, though. Not really funny as hell, but, like, I couldn't grasp my mind right I know a few people that, like, smoke, has smoke pot back in their day. Did not vote for it. I'm just like, I don't get it. But it, to each your own, you know. It is what it is. And But I'm about to wrap it up because I'm running out of things to talk about with the best of both worlds in the 90s. And you know, we'll get back on that here for a minute or two. But anyway, also, you know, back in the 90s, you didn't have all these streaming deals. I just not thought of that. You know, you didn't have uh, Netflix or uh, Paramount Plus, Hulu, Tubi, and whatever other else they've got out there. You know, you had cable, you had direct, and you had dish, I think. And you had cable, you know. And I can still remember when I was a kid in the 90s, maybe early 2000s, there, I... I my mom and dad gave me one of their old TVs, and it was a big-ass dinosaur TV, too. But the part of it, about that, from the top to about that much of it, there were green lines around it. It looked like a musical, uh, sheet music for sheet, or music, and with green on it. It just had green lines going through it. And it got one <laughs> You know, I did the bunny rabbit ears and got like channel 13 and then thought it was so cool to stay up and watch the 9 o'clock news on channel 13 or whatever the hell they had that night or whatever. Um, you know, I don't think kids realize how good they've got it nowadays. And I had it pretty good back then, you know, because, uh, you know, I had Nintendo, uh, Super Nintendo, uh, PS, PlayStation, PS1, you know, I had that too, but, you know, but everything wasn't online either. You know, it was funny. I was talking to my nephew. I said he was about 10 years old, and he was gripping, not gripping, but I guess you could say gripping, that the internet wasn't working. He couldn't play his game. I said, I don't know if you're, I said, you're going to find this really funny, though. When I was a kid, Mario wasn't even online. You know, we didn't have that, you know. You know, and it just, it's funny because he didn't understand it and he never got the concept, you know, because he's 10 years old and, you know, everything's online now, you know. You have to have the internet. Like, you didn't have to have the internet with Marvel, Batman, or anybody, you know. Batman or the Ducks or whatever. Um, but anyways, like I said, the street, I mean, anyways, so... Uh, that's my video for today. I hope you get like it, dislike it. Hope you get a chuckle or information, whatever. Just subscribe, like, share, comment, suggest, whatever. And I'll see y'all later.